that all about? Uh, why is it so wrestling matches? Thank you. Nice to see you all. How are you? Nice to see you. Big hand, strong guy. Uh, big, how are you? Nice to see you. So you the owner? My son's the owner. Oh, you did that very nice and easy, huh? Is he as good as you? He's great. Good. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Mr. President, you know, I've been going to the barbershops all across the country. Yeah. So I wanted to have a natural conversation, Good. you know, with these folks right here. So this fellow right here, he used to be in law enforcement for some years. What would you say is the most important issue facing the country right now? For me, it's the border. Right. For right. me, it's the border. I agree. And uh, how to control that, how to keep uh, illegal migrants from coming into the country. Right very important for me and uh if i had a question to to ask about it would be how do we do the how do we control the the city sanctuary city because new york is a we get rid of them we yes. get rid of them because they're sanctuary you know what they're for criminals and all over the country the criminals go there uh, but you're right you know the polls are showing that inflation and the bo and not the border the border is third they have inflation and the economy as the number one and number two issue. I disagree. I think inflation is massive. The economy is massive. But the border to me is like it's the fabric of our country. And we had the strongest border in recorded history. Four years ago, you had a border. You didn't have the problems that you have now. Uh, last week, they announced that we had 13,099 convicted murderers released from jails all over the world. You know, it's not South America. It's all over the world, including South America. So. Uh, I agree with you. I think the biggest problem we have is the border. It's something, and it's also the hardest thing to solve. And the only way you can solve it, you have to get the criminals, the murderers, you got to get them out. You got to get them out fast before they prey on our people. And that was a big question for me because I, I'm a retired New York City. Yo, and as I'm thinking right now, the people who will come to this great place we call America, if you're an elite in another country, why would you come here? If you're doing well and your family's doing well in the country you live in, why would you come here? You would. You will own, the only people who will come here are the people who are disenfranchised, don't got no money, things of that nature. And if you come here, if you're in a poor country with no money, when you come here, it's kind of worse, man, because it's just it's you're very poor at that point. And and do you result in a crime? I'm not saying that every immigrant who ever came here is a part of crime, because I I. Growing up, I've seen the balance, but I think it was definitely, I think growing up in school and like they had their own little like class, it was called ESL, I think it's something like that. It was a lot of them that was hella illegal and doing hella illegal shit, bro, just to survive and do those things. But why do we don't need that here? We got enough problems as Americans that we don't need other people who come. <laughs> Cause like I said, if you're elite, or you're doing well in another country, there's no point of coming to America because you're, you're living good, your family's good. So yeah, that is a huge problem. And I can imagine how many jobs they take or opportunities they take from other people who've been, been near here their whole lives. This is a Latin man speaking in a Latin barbershop. So it tells you that like, it's, it's not only affecting other people, it's affecting them. Because when they come here and do the right thing, it makes it bad for them that all these illegal people come and ruin it for them. Detectives, right. so in New York here, we, we've run across the, that for well, a the long other time. problem you have is that you're not allowed to do your job. Yeah. And oh, when you were there, you yeah. go back 10, 15 years, when you were there, you were allowed to do your job. Yes. New York's finest. They're still New York's finest, but they're not allowed to do their job. So when you were president, I know for a fact, I was able to do three things. I was able to see money, save money, spend money. Right now, in the past almost four years now, I'm losing my business basically. The Are money's just it? not there. It's your business. It's my business. I started it for the past ten years, and the only time I knew I made it was when you were in office. So I could speak for myself. Right. And the thing is, it's like I don't know what more to do. How can we make the economy come back? How, how do you get to the bottom so, of this? So here's what we're doing. Uh, number one, it all began with the oil. They screwed around with what I did with oil. We had the greatest. We were energy independent. Uh, you remember back four or five years ago, $1.87 for a gallon of gas. We actually had it. Yeah, blow gas was, was down. I'm not going to hold you. Gas was down. That's, that's crazy. 
which gas is powered all the, the goods that you get through trucks and things like all that shit matters, bro. So just doing one thing could change the trajectory of everybody and everything. Because you see, these are the real people. These ain't politicians. These are people with real businesses and real barbershops and real things. And if that's how they feeling in the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? It's, I can imagine that they feeling that's all over, like, all over the country. New York is hella expensive, bro. Than that for your car. $1.87. Now it's at three and a half. But uh, it was much higher. They brought back my policies to break even but by that time the damage was done and now you have inflation and you have the cost so high and they they haven't gone down we're going to do two things interest rates are going down it's going to be brought down it's going to be brought down fast but much more importantly and quicker we're going to drill baby drill you've heard that right drill baby drill we're going to get our oil we're going to have much more of it that we're going to do four to five times more than we're doing right now we can do that these people are amazing they can do it and we'll be supplying it to Asia, we'll be supplying it to Europe, we'll be supplying it to everywhere. And that's going to bring down prices. It's going to bring down the cost of everything. If you make donuts, when you look at these stores, they have trucks that deliver, they have stoves. Damn, I'm smart. Damn, I'm smart. <laughs> I, I got to give myself some credit. Because before he would say it, I knew that. Yeah, it's like, oil is a key to a lot of things that function in our world. So when he's saying oil, most people are like, what you mean oil? That shit ain't got no, I, I mean, I make cookies. Bruh, how do they get the cookies to you? How do they get the ingredients? All this shit is through trucking and through most of that shit. So if you could definitely save on oil, you could save on a lot of things in the country. And ovens, you have your lighting, you have all this, you know, equipment. And all of that electric equipment that he's using on your beautiful head of hair, you have a good looking head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> That boy's funny. I'm jealous. Look at that flat top. I'd have a flat top. I wish I had a flat top. You never had, you never had a hair loss problem, no. did you? <laughs> Lucky. He's one of those uh, gifted ones. Right? Anyway, uh, what, what you do, those machines are very expensive. They're running the machines at electric. When that comes down, every like in a shop like this, no matter what you do, it's about energy. We're going to bring it down. We're going to get the prices down. How's your rent done in terms of, do you own the store or is it rented? No, it's rented. And is the landlord a good guy? Is he okay? Yeah, yeah he's a good he's guy. All right. yeah. Do you cut his hair, I hope? I mean, he comes in from time to time. <laughs> you, you know what? That was a funny if, you, if you're as good as your father says, right, and you cut his hair great, that's very important to barber to a guy. So yeah. he could be a wealthy landlord, but he'll give you a low rent because having a good barber is a very important thing, I can yeah. tell you. So, Mr. President, you got a young guy right That's a there. big thing, though. It's, a, he, it's a huge thing. So how has your rent been? So where was it like five years ago, the rent? I mean, the rent was significantly, significantly lower. Um, now it's uh, it's gone up about... 1200 since yeah uh, it's okay it's, it's a big and increase it, my issue was more uh the energy i've been paying 2100 since i first opened up in the last seven months it shot up to fifteen thousand. damn damn i can see why nobody going for the other side god damn how much money are y'all taking from people and where is the money going oh yeah i forgot it's going to all these other countries 60 million here, 60 million there, a billion. As a matter of fact, I'm saying the wrong number, billion. They sending all y'all money somewhere else, bro. <laughs> think, think about that shit. You pay taxes as an American, you will hope for that to be your safety net. You know what I'm saying, too? If anything go wrong in the country or they need to the help, they have all this tax money that they tax people. They sending that shit to other people. And this man got a fifth, what? 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 I know I didn't hear that price, because they, they, uh, what? It's fifteen thousand, and that's you went from twenty one hundred to fifteen thousand in this establishment. Yeah. How many heads can you can you take care of? That's that's I a mean, lot. Crazy. Right? This is like yeah. so much stealing and losing for a lot. Of people. So when, we from twenty one hundred to fifteen thousand. Yes. Yeah, so they so there's an example though, energy, right? So energy when that comes down, ready? I I almost hate to say because you'd be at seven thousand, right? But right. your energy bill from January twentieth. If I win, we gotta win. And we're gonna, by the way, and we're in New York. Yeah, ain't no ifs. You gotta win. If the, if you don't win, niggas is getting taxed twenty thousand per energy. Like you know, it's it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that lady's gonna tax the living shit out y'all for everything that ever existed on the plate. Oh God, just to hear that increase from a real human. I'm tired of hearing politicians. This is a real human with a real business. Like.
that shit gross. I just love New York. If we win, oh, oh I love this guy. Look at that. Give me that hat. I'm gonna sign it. Come on, give me that hat. To give me the hat, I'm gonna sign it. I love this guy. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. I'll sign yours too. Look at that one. We huh? better win that. You might not so what? He's very busy. I don't know why. He's, he's gonna keep busy for a long time. Yeah. So let me ask you, how much is it like a haircut? An average haircut? Guy comes in, he wants thirty dollars, forty dollars. Yeah. Right now. What did it used to be? Fifteen. Twelve. Fifteen. 15? Yeah. Well, we talking about ten years ago. Now. And so yeah. We had to make make it make sense. You know, right. like you can't charge a regular price, especially out here. Do you have guys like these guys? Do they come in and negotiate the price? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I remember when haircuts was twelve dollars. He said forty to twelve to forty is a big jump. That's why everybody ain't getting their haircut. Because you see your boy, I'm out here whooping it. Forty dollars every time I need a haircut, and you probably need one every week or two weeks, depending on who you are. You know what I'm saying? Many every two weeks or every week. That's a lot of extra. For a haircut, I'm not gonna lie to you. When that shit was twelve dollars, I was getting haircuts all the time. <laughs> so that tells you a lot about how it's affecting every single person. It's probably <laughs> new. I, I would do. Hey, what's your question for the president? What is the plan to do about the fast, uh, the food healthcare industry, and getting the artificial foods bans banned in our urban communities that have less access to organic whole foods? So. Bobby Kennedy, right? Everybody likes Bobby yeah. Kennedy. And he's so big into the health food and women things, everything. He wants to do things in the environment. And he endorsed me. First time a Kennedy's ever endorsed a Republican. Maybe it's going to be the last, yeah. but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a great guy. He would be so perfect. He doesn't like artificial foods and he doesn't like pesticides and all the stuff they put on them. And if you listen to him for 10 minutes, I mean, he says other countries that don't do anything are healthier than us, okay? We're not that healthy, to put it mildly. Uh, so no artificial foods. We don't want artificial We have plenty of food. The food isn't our problem. And our farmers are great. And our farmers aren't allowed to do their job. You know, our farmers did great. Four years ago, they were doing the, just about the best they've ever done. They're not doing well at all now. We're not going to have artificial foods. We don't want artificial foods. We want healthy foods. And a lot of things are going to be going. And I'll tell you, I'm going to have Bobby Kennedy involved in it. He's a great guy. And even the way when I mentioned his name, all you guys, and you're tough cookies. You know, you wouldn't think, sometimes you'd say, maybe you wouldn't like a guy like Bobby. But he, he's a person that talks more about food and health than anything else. So I think that's cool. So we'll get it. We'll get it. One taken. thing y'all need to understand is, if he doesn't know it, he's willing to hire people who know it. <laughs> that's the billionaire shit. It, it, that's the shit. It's like I don't know. I, I don't know. To he, he, as you can tell, he don't know too much about health. But Bobby Kennedy knows something. So that's who he trying to put on deck. Like you know, what I'm saying he know more than me. And a lot of people, I feel like they think they know it a lot, and that'll be the detriment of people. Instead of saying, "Yo, I don't know that much. I got somebody who know what they talk about." You know what I'm saying too. So I don't think everything he does right, but I do think people dislike him more than they listen to him. Like listen, just listen with your ears. Like. Cause that shit could benefit you tremendously in your life. Like, just listen. You don't gotta hate on someone, cause you, you know what I'm saying. And you could probably dislike the person. Y'all don't like him, but what he's saying is it untrue? I need to know this shit. Is it untrue? Cause right now you eating unhealthy. Sh sh everything being taxed. Like, come on. Take care. Absolutely. You'll be healthier in four years from now <laughs> than you are now. And you look very healthy to me, by the way. All right, brother. Thank you. Go ahead. What do you have for the president? Mr. Trump, um, my biggest concern is the future and the future generation, right. my kids' generation. Yeah. A lot of people are worried that attaining the American dream at this point in time and in the near future is going to be unattainable for this upcoming generation, which I have kids that are part of that generation. Um, How many kids do you have? I have two, a 17 and an 18 year old. Good. Good. Um, now, the big, I, I believe one of the biggest hurdles we have when it comes to attaining that American dream is over taxation. Yeah. When it comes to federal taxes, right. I know you, we're, we're going to bring back, I'm sure you're going to um, start back up the pipeline, right. the Keystone Pipeline, in two minutes. which is going to generate. That boy said in two minutes. <laughs> he said we start that shit in two minutes. <laughs> Yo, that Keystone Pipeline, I've been hearing about it and I keep hearing it. So that means that's very, that shit was very important to, uh, not only the money aspect of the country, but our leverage over other countries that, that they have to come mess with us. If you don't got to come mess with America, how y'all make money? That's the whole point. They pushing everything out. Everything is going internet. 
to, yeah, that makes sense, bro. I'm sorry. This shit makes sense. I, I, matter of fact, I'm not sorry. I love logic. I love the truth. Like, I don't care who's spilling it. I don't care who is telling it. As long as you're telling it. And I keep hearing that. And then a lot of people on the other side, they're like, I don't know. I, I know Biden drills, but they cut off the pipeline. So literally, it, how are you selling to other countries? These other countries could develop their own oils and things of that nature. Then they don't need us. You, you need to be needed. An abundance of revenue. Right. Also, with the tariffs that you've spoken of. So my question is, with all this extra revenue yeah. we're, we're going to be bringing into the country, so do you believe at some point in time we could find a way, once the country's back on its feet and getting enough revenue and paid off our debt, do you yeah. think it's possible to find a way to eliminate federal taxes? For there is a way. And, there is and, a and way. How do you feel about it? You know, it in the old days, when we were smart, when we were a smart country, in the 1890s and all this, this is when the country was relatively the richest it ever was. It had all tariffs. It didn't have an income tax. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have income taxes and we have people that are dying. They're paying tax and they don't have the money to pay the tax. No. In the old days, 1890, 1880, we had so much money. They had to set up committees, blue ribbon committees, how to spend our wealth. We had no idea how to spend it with so much money. Then we went to the income tax system and the rest is sort of history. But uh, no, there is a way. I mean, if we, if what I'm planning comes out, it's a great question, by the way. Right? Everyone could attain the American dream. a pretty sophisticated dream. cat, you know? <laughs> Everyone could attain the American He's dream. He's hella New York, bro. <laughs> they called him a cat. That's why it's, it's kind of weird for New Yorkers because like, I'll say this. Even my own experience, I had a white friend who I was like real good friends with my whole life. You, most people would consider him racist. <laughs> he would say shit, do shit, but it, I, I guess New York is a different bot. Like, we all live together. We all, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I never noticed it nor cared because I was trying to get to my own destination. And I think other countries, they don't, um, other plate, I said other countries, other states and shit like that, it's not like that. It's very separated. Blacks, this, that, and third. It's not like that in New York. It's some, somewhat of that, like, in New York, but it's definitely not like that. Like, I've been in the hood with white people. Dead ass. So, <laughs> like... <laughs> I guess the the language he's speaking to the country crazy, but to me it's just some New York shit. Like, like people are honest in New York. They they speak their opinion and they don't care. Like if you if you care, <laughs> so it's kind of I want to say it's refreshing actually. It shit is refreshing to hear someone speak like a normal human being instead of a politician trying to sell me some shit. I mean, if it wasn't for the high cost, that the burden of, of high taxes, and Everything. we're taxed at every step of the way. Yeah. When we make it, when and we spend it, and regulations. And regulations. So I cut more regulations in four years than any other president by four times. Yeah, let's go. You would mm -hmm. ask one question. What is one thing that you probably feel like you didn't do in your first term that you feel like you could do question. better now? I'll tell you the one thing, because I did, you know, look, we had the best economy with the best border. We had a lot of, so I did a lot of good stuff. Rebuilt the military. It's all about people. I got to get the right people. You know, when I went there, I won. 92% of the presidents, 92% for the whole history of our country, were politicians. 8% were generals. No admirals. 8% were That's it. That's 100%. 92 and 8. They were politicians and they were generals. General Washington, you know, et cetera, et cetera. George Washington. Thank you. Oh, you're doing very good at that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sign this. I got, give me I got this. longer arms than yeah, you. Yeah, you do have longer arms. Uh, so they were. So here's what we do. We take all of that and we come and here comes Donald Trump down the line. And so it's about people. It's all about people. I went to Washington 17 times in my entire life. So I wasn't a Washington person. I was a New York person. So when I went to Washington, all of a sudden I'm standing in the White House opposite the Lincoln bedroom. And I said, man, this is so amazing. But I didn't really know too many. So I had to rely on people to give me recommendations for people, to run agencies, to be secretary of this, secretary of that, all big stuff. And I didn't know anybody. I had to rely. And I still did great. Look, we rebuilt the military. We knocked out ISIS. We did all these things. We did great. We had the best economy. We had the best everything. Everything was good. But I had some people that I, if I had it to do again, I wouldn't have used. Now I've been there four years, plus another four that I'm sort of there in a way. I know the best people. To me, it's all about people. You got to have the right people. We have the best people lined up. We're going to do a great job. Listen, so I'm going down to see the Wall Street Journal. If I had my choice, I'd stay with you for two, three hours because you guys are great. You guys are the same as me. It's the same stuff. We were born the same way. 
uh, I grew up in Queens and all of that. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, New York is a different. I just, like, we don't, like, rich doesn't matter. Like, I don't know how to explain it. In New York, it's not like that, bro. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Now, you might not rock with what he's saying, you know what I'm saying, too, but when I think about New York and he says, yo, he was born like you, when I think about it, like, I didn't show with rich kids. I didn't show with poor kids. I didn't been in big ass houses. I didn't been in small ass houses. So that's I maybe that is the diversity of New York. That is just it's like that. Like you know what I'm saying too. Because like I said, I've talked to since a kid. I've literally had relationships and talked to rich people, like very rich, rich ass people. And I wasn't rich, but I didn't feel no type of way. And I think the world's trying to make us feel some type of way. Cause this oh yo this dude grew up privileged all this other shit. But when you in New York, this shit is a grind, grind, grind at all time, time, time. And we, we kind of all speak the same language. That, I, that's why I understand why New York ain't... Why they just so blue? Like, they should be kind of, like, in the middle. Like, why are we so blue of a state? Because when I think about it, it's probably the women. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. The women are different. <laughs> the women different in New York. But, men, we kind of speak the same language regardless of where you came from, where you started from. <clears throat> and Queens is a... That's a, a, a unique place to grow up. If you ever been to Queens, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know if people have been to Queens. I've been to Queens a couple of times in my life. Like, I've been damn near everywhere in New York, so. Great father. I had a father who was a great guy. He was, he was tough but good. Big heart. Big, big heart. Uh, and he was a construction guy, pretty much, and a real estate guy. And I learned a lot from him. He was great. But I, kn I know you people so well. Without knowing you, I know you so well. When I walked in here, I said, this is, this is uh, home territory. And I really appreciate it. And you are a fantastic. I bet he's a fantastic father. Exactly. Take care yes. of that guy, right? I think we got time for one more, okay, Mr. President. Good. Go ahead, Mr. Brother. President. Are there things that is he a good barber too? Yeah. yeah. Who's better, you or him as a barber? <laughs> How long have you worked here? Eleven years. That's fantastic. Yeah. Could he give me a good haircut yet? Yeah. You gonna do it? <laughs> That's the master right there. Yeah. Who's the master? Is yeah, he the best? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best. He's the oldest guy. 35 years. He's been coming in 35 years. He looks like a young guy. Yeah, yeah. Coming at him since good job. He did a good job with your boy, I tell you, right? Yeah. He did a good job with your son, huh? He's a great kid. He's doing good. Him. And you have other kids too? Yeah, I got four. Uh, four all together. Two That's girls and two boys. All good. I'll bet all good. Right? All doing, doing great. I can look at him and see that yeah. you all turned out. I'm happy. I'm at peace. Do they work here too at all? No, no. One of them works uh, with, with him so in his who, restaurant. Who that works with me? Oh, restaurant. good. What do you do? I, I'm a real estate investor and I own a restaurant and a bar. Good, great, great. You look great. Thank you. I'm, I'm here next to the president. I got to look great. <laughs> the president, I think we can say here. I really, right. did, I really did enjoy this video. I know people going to be like, what the? But I enjoyed it, bro. I enjoyed this video. Just to, uh, you know, come in a barbershop, kick it. And, you know... And get some answers to your questions and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Because the America don't care about men. America trying to throw the men out. So to see a group of men in a room where most people like he talks about like because they, they want to shit on black people. He talk about Hispanic people all the time. But not one of these Hispanic people feel offended or none of that shit. They from um, like I said, if we treated America more like the Olympics, we would be somewhere. Because when we all, when the Olympics pop off, we all American, USA. And we don't have that same feeling anytime else. So this shit was dope to see, you know what I'm saying? Because these people come from the hood, they come from the traps, all types of shit. And they, they're they able to articulate themselves and, you know, talk to a, a former president. But to be honest, talk to a billionaire, which is, to be honest, is more important to people. Think about it. He said there was... 92% of them people were politicians and eight were generals of the army. Nothing else. And America's made us so many different people. Why do y'all keep putting politicians and generals in charge of everything? Like, they know everything. They don't know everything. So, I could see where this shit kind of refreshing for other people to see new things and experience new people. Even if most fake-ass woke people don't like it. Like, you fake and you woke. So, we don't, I, to be honest, I damn sure don't care for it. I rock with these type of talks, and this shit was very, very interesting. And sh shout out to the barbershop, shout out to Trump, shout out to, uh, you know, the people who really a ask good questions that, that could really benefit all of us and not just hope and dreams and make history. I ain't hear no making history right here. I heard 
I heard tangible shit. Like, we open back pipelines. We doing certain things so y'all can get the money back in y'all pockets. That is beautiful right there. Shout out to this man. Y'all hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe. Uh, and I know I don't look like you're normal. You know what I'm saying, too? Because most people kind of identify a certain type of... I wouldn't even say I'm a supporter of Trump or the government, period. Like, they didn't did people too bad. I'm a supporter of people. So the people in America run the country. If I told y'all y'all was 300 million versus, like, a thousand people, I don't think y'all be doing math. Yeah, They can't rule y'all. Y'all rule them. So that's what y'all should have in y'all mind. Like, as people, we are the leaders. We are the people who make the decisions, not these people. So... Take your power back as a American, you know what I'm saying? And definitely make this shit where it's... Because I think people, when they think of, like, make America great again, they thinking about when black people suffer. You're never... It, that shit is over. You're not suffering no more. You're not in slavery no more. All that shit is over. So, but some of the things they were doing back then made them ultimately rich as hell. So, why not... I don't understand why you wouldn't take something that works. You feel me? Slavery didn't work. It just didn't work. It, 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 it ended. But some shit worked. We still use roads, right? Roads was not built yesterday. It was built a thousand years ago. Or I'm not going to say a thousand, but a hundred years ago. Some good roads. Wheels. We use all this shit that we use in the past. But when it comes to this shit, it's like, oh, but I suffered. You, It's a different time, different era. But if you use some of those things that they have in the past to create a better future, trust me, this shit will be going A1. So good luck to everybody.